Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and today in this video we are going to learn about common steps of lymphocyte signaling pathways. In the last video we learned about the overview of the signaling pathway and in this video we'll learn about the common steps. So when we are learning about the overview that time only I told you that the first step is always the binding of antigen. Once the antigen will bind, the receptor will get activated either through conformational changes or due to phosphorylation. So that phosphorylation is tyrosine phosphorylation. Once the receptor gets activated, it will bind the adapter protein with it because of which the signaling pathway will proceed. So this is also a common step that for any step, one adapter protein will bind to the, the cytosolic part of the receptor. And this will only gather the other signaling molecules. The signaling pathway proceeds by one molecule activating the other. Now this activation in the later stage is due to phosphorylation of serine and threonine. The receptor gets phosphorylated at tyrosine and that's how it becomes activated. In the later state, whatever the signaling molecules becomes activated due to phosphorylation, that phosphorylation is at serine or threonine. Next is phosphorylation of membrane phospholipid. This also we learned during the overview that PIP2 due to phosphorylation gets converted into PIP3. So phosphorylation of membrane phospholipids. Then signal induced PIP2 breakdown. This also we learned that PLC gamma degrade PIP2 into DAG and IP3. So these are the common steps in any signaling pathway in the immune system. So this is the first that as soon as the antigen binds to B cell or T cell, it induces clustering of receptor. So here you can say BCR, Ig alpha beta. This is a raft. What do we mean by raft? We will study about lipid raft in detail in cell biology for now because these receptors are present on the membrane. Membrane means plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid. It's a phospholipid bilayer. Now this phospholipid is not static and solid. It is fluidic in nature. We already learned you must have learned in your school and colleges that fluid mosaic model. So it is fluidic in nature. That means it is not stiff, but some portion of this phospholipid membrane, which is called as a raft, this portion is not fluidic in nature. And this raft is essential for the binding of receptors at one position. So whenever any signaling pathway has to start, the receptor should remain fixed at that particular location so that the signaling pathway can proceed smoothly. So because of which whenever in the absence of any antigen, these receptor either the diagram is for BCR, but whether it is a BCR or TCR, they are present maybe somewhere in the lipid bilayer membrane. But as soon as any antigen will bind to this receptors, they will push inside the lipid raft region so that they remain st static in that raft for the signal transaction pathway to happen. So this is the first step that as soon as the antigen binds, it induces clustering of receptors which are present far apart. Now they'll come close together. Next step is tyrosine phosphorylation. Tyrosine phosphorylation means activation of the cytoplasmic domain of the receptor. For B cell receptor, we have Ig alpha beta. For T cell receptor, we have CD3. Now, this tyrosine kinase, which will phosphorylate these receptor parts and activate it, these are mostly of SRC family kinase. This SRC came from Rau's sarcoma virus. Now, T cell activation happened. That means this SRC family kinase. In case of T cell, it is LCKN, FYN. In case of B cell receptor, it is lymphin and BLK. So, as you can see in the diagram, this is the inactive form the SH2 here the tyrosine of 508 position is phosphorylated that's how it it is blocking the SH2 and this form is a inactive form now what the kinase will do it will remove this phosphate from tyrosine of position 508 and it will phosphorylate the tyrosine of some other position that is 397 now this form becomes activated so that's how it activates by dephosphorylating the tyrosine of one position and by phosphorylating the tyrosine of another position. In lymphocyte, the tyrosine kinase enzyme CSK is responsible for maintaining phosphorylation of the inhibitory tyrosine. This tyrosine 508, this is known as inhibitory tyrosine because when this is phosphorylated, the receptor is in an inactive state. 
So to maintain it in the inactive state in the absence of any antigen, this CSK works. Now these are the list of the domains of adapter protein and their binding specificity. Like SRC homology 2, it is specific phosphotyrosine of the motif containing 3 to 6 amino acid located at carboxyl terminal of the tyrosine. If you see SRC homology 3, it is a proline rich sequences. Plextrin homology, it is specific for phosphoinositides. So like this, these are the different domains of adapter molecule which have particular binding specificity. Now the next common step is the binding of adapter. Once the antigen bound with the receptor, the receptor undergo activation due to phosphorylation at tyrosine, what it will do? It will bind the adapter molecule. What is the function of adapter molecule? It functions as a docking site for the binding of other signaling molecules. It will bring all other signaling molecules in close proximity so that they can function properly. Now, in the later step, the phosphorylation of serine and threonine works. Now, what is the function of serine threonine phosphorylation? Activate a phosphorylated enzyme induce the phosphorylated protein to interact with different set of proteins it alters the protein location within the cell protect protein from destruction convert phosphorylated protein into a target for proteosomal destruction now this is the overview for the next common step that is phosphorylation of membrane phospholipid that is this one pip2 to pip3 and then signal induced pip2 breakdown so the pip2 will break down into DAG and IP3. So, in the last slide, we learned about the serine threonine phosphorylation. That means these phosphorylations. These are serine threonine phosphorylations that phosphorylates in the later stages. So, somewhere the phosphorylation will proceed the molecules towards destruction, leaving the activated molecule so that it can function properly. Somewhere only the removal of phosphorylate can make the molecules activated so that it can cross the nuclear barrier. Somewhere the addition of phosphorus will activate the molecule and that's how it will activate the another molecule by phosphorylating it. So these are the functions of serine threonine phosphorylation which we learned in the last slide. So this overview figure we already learned that for the expression of the gene as a response to the binding ligand all the pathways or either of the pathways can take place depending upon the gene that is getting expressed. Sometimes the gene needs more than one transcription factor in that all the pathways are needed because all the transcription factors are needed for the transcription of this particular gene. If the gene can get transcribed by only one transcription factor then for that gene only that particular pathway will run. So this is all about the common steps in case of signaling of the immune system. Now, when we will study exact signaling pathway, everything will remain the same. Only what can differ? Say for example, here it is written PCLC gamma. In place of PCLC gamma, it can be something else. It will be PCL phospholipase, but may not be C gamma. It can be anything else associated with this. So, name of these signaling molecules can be changed a little bit. Otherwise, the pathway will remain the same. So, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you found the video informative, please do like, share and subscribe the channel. And hit the bell icon for the next video notification. Till then, stay safe, stay happy.